Hey, fabulous friends. We are about to answer this question. What is imagery? Stay tuned. For this activity, you're gonna need some scissors, a glue stick, and some highlighters, markers, or colored pencils. These are the foldables I'm gonna be using in this video. If you don't have it, you can click the link in the description box below and go grab yourself a copy. If you do have them, go ahead and start cutting these out. This one, you're gonna cut out around this dotted line. And over here, you're gonna cut out around this outside bold line, but don't cut out any of these other lines. If you don't have the foldable, it's okay. You can still stick around and see what you learn. If at any time during this video I'm moving too fast, just pause the video so you can catch up. It is time for our next poetry lesson. We are gonna be looking at something called imagery. So once you've gotten these cut out, we are gonna do the same thing we always do, which is flip it over and fold right on that black line so that we make a little doorway in the middle here that's gonna open up. Once you've got this folded, you are gonna flip it upside down. You are going to glue this down. So put a nice, good strip of glue around the edges and then make a big X in the middle so it'll be really secure, nice and straight. Then open it up and just smooth it out in the middle. Now we're gonna take our poem and it's the insert here and we're just gonna make sure that we have cut it enough so that this will close over it and it looks good. Okay, go ahead and pause if you need to to catch up. Otherwise, let's keep going. All right, so we are going to take a look at imagery. Now, if you think about the word imagery, you'll actually hear image. And all an image is, is a picture. So when you make a picture in the, with your words, it helps the reader imagine that they're there with you. And that's what our definition basically says. Using words that appeal to the senses in order to create a picture in the reader's mind. So when we describe something and it really helps the reader smell it or see it or feel like they're touching it or tasting it or hearing it, that is imagery and it helps put a really good picture in the reader's mind and it helps kind of transport them to whatever you're describing in your writing. So let's take a look at this poem first. We'll just read it and then we'll look for some examples of imagery. A sense of yellow. It's the warmth of sunshine as it tingles on my skin. It's the icy lemonade that I eagerly drink in. It's the scent of buttercups carried gently on the breeze. It's the sweetest honeycomb and the quiet buzz of bees. It's the sour lemon drop that melts upon my lips. It's the taste of summer rain and I gulp down greedy sips. It's salty air that's blowing over castles on the beach. It is the tiny sailboats, far away and out of reach. Yellow's more than a feeling, it's something real and true. It is the warmth of friendship that I feel when I'm with you. All right, so now let's look for some imagery. We're gonna take a look first at the sense of smell. So anything that is being described as something that we can smell. Now it's a little tricky because smell and taste are pretty similar when you're talking about describing them, but some things you would really smell more than taste. So let's see if we can find some of those within the poem. Here we've got a really specific one. It says, it is the scent of buttercups. A buttercup is a type of flower and sometimes we can smell the sweet scent of the flower because it's actually being blown to us on the breeze. So this is appealing to our sense of smell. We can kind of imagine that it's being carried on this breeze towards us. And here's another one, salty air that's blowing. Now it seems like you wouldn't be able to smell salt, but when you go to the ocean, you do get a different scent. It's like this salty, fresh, clean scent in the air. So like I said, it's a little hard to pick out the sense of smell because most things could really be referring to the taste rather than the smell. But here's two good examples because this is specifically talking about a scent and this is talking about something in the air that you wouldn't necessarily taste. Now, if it was talking about salt water and you were swimming and it was probably talking about it getting in your mouth, so that would be a taste, but this is a smell here because it's just in the air. Okay, the next one is sight. 
And this is going to be any words that are describing what something looks like. So any good adjectives that describe the color or the shape or the size of something, those are going to be appealing to our sense of sight because we can actually get a picture of it in our head. Here I saw a really good one. This is castles on the beach. I can actually imagine a picture of these sand castles all over the beach. So that is appealing. So I'm not just picturing a blank beach where it's just empty. I'm picturing big sand castles. And then I also get a sense of sight here when it describes these tiny sailboats. Now, I don't think sailboats are technically tiny, but if I was on the beach and I was looking out way in the distance, those sailboats sailing out there on the ocean would look very tiny to me. So that gives me a good picture now of being on the beach with the sandcastles, looking out and seeing these tiny sailboats. And then it's being described a little bit further by saying that they're far away and out of reach. I can just kind of picture them way out in the ocean, very, very small, maybe even kind of making me think, oh, I wish I was on one of the boats too. That looks like so much fun. But that is appealing to my sense of sight because I automatically get a picture in my head of what that would look like if I was there. Okay, now we're going to look at some examples of imagery using the sense of touch. Now, when this one is probably one of the easiest ones because it goes along with anything that you can imagine what it feels like, soft or bumpy or rough or smooth. So anything that you can imagine what it feels like would go along with the sense of touch. So let's look for some. We've got the warmth of sunshine. I can imagine being outside and having the sun shine down on my skin. You know, you kind of feel your skin heating up. And it describes it here by saying it tingles on my skin. And it really does if you stand in the sun too long you'll get that tingly feeling of heat on your skin because the sun is really hot. Here we're describing icy lemonade. It's really cold and that's what we want when it's hot in the summer. And then here we're describing a sour lemon drop. We're describing it melting on my lips. I can kind of imagine this candy. It's so hot and I'm going to put it in my mouth and it's just going to start melting immediately. So I get that sense of feeling of sticky, yummy lemon candy on my lips. Okay, the next one is taste. And taste is a fun one because you can think of any flavor, any way that you can describe anything you would eat. Um, and that's going to appeal to your sense of taste and kind of transport you to wherever the author is talking about. So let's look for some examples. Here I've got lemonade. I immediately kind of imagine that sweet, tangy um, yumminess that lemonade brings to mind. I eagerly drink in goes right along with lemonade because I can just imagine taking a big gulp of that yummy, sweet, sour lemonade when I'm hot on a summer day. And that really appeals to my sense of taste because I can imagine drinking it. Here we've got sweetest honeycomb. Honeycomb is actually what the bees put the honey in. So before it gets spun out of that and put into nice little cute bear bottles in the grocery store, it's in what's called a honeycomb inside of the beehive. And so we're talking about something very sweet. Honey is very sweet to the taste. So we can imagine taking a taste of yummy sweet honey and that just kind of gets my mouth ready to take a bite of something with honey. And then we've got another example here, the taste of summer rain. Now summer rain could go along with feeling if we're talking about it hitting our skin. It could go along with um, some other senses as well, but here we're actually seeing it described as a taste. If you've ever been outside on a nice light summer rainy day and you just open your mouth and take a taste of that rain, it has a specific taste to it and kind of transports us there and makes us think of summer rains that are like soft and gentle and maybe cool off the summer day a little bit. And then here we've got gulp down greedy sips. I gulp down greedy sips. That's just kind of reminding me that we're like getting a little taste of that rain and we're sipping it down. So those are some examples of the sense of taste. Some other things we could have used were the words sour or bitter or sweet, of course, is a really common one, and we've got sweetest here. So it's just anything that has to do with tasting something or getting that sensation of eating something that we would be helping the reader to get a good picture in their head. 
Okay, the next one that we're gonna look at is hearing. We're gonna do it in pink. So anything that has to do with sound. In this one, we only have one example of something that's appealing to the sense of sound. We have the quiet buzz of bees. And the word buzz is actually an onomatopoeia because buzz, it sounds like the sound that bees actually make. It sounds like the sound it's describing. So the quiet buzz of bees, like as soon as we read that line, I can like imagine that bzz, bzz, just like kind of off a little ways off, maybe in a tree somewhere where their beehive is. So we can kind of hear that sound. Okay, and the last one we're gonna talk about. Now, technically it's not one of our senses. We have five senses. We have smell, sight, touch, taste, and hearing. This one is feelings. And don't get confused with touch. Touch means you're actually touching it and you're feeling what it feels like physically. But feelings, and the reason I put a heart here, is because we're talking about an emotion, the way something makes us feel, like sad or happy. We're gonna do this one in red. And of course, I don't have a red highlighter, so I just grabbed a marker. So if you have a marker, or a crayon that will work so let's take a look now and all the things that are kind of going along with feeling are in this last stanza and it actually has the word feeling here it says it's more than just a feeling and it's not talking about a feeling when you touch something it's talking about a feeling in your heart it's something real and true okay this isn't something that we can physically go find truth or something real but we know that we have it when we find it it is the warmth of friendship. Now, technically friendship is not actually warm. If I was really cold and my friend called me, I would not get warmer. But we kind of use these terms to describe how wonderful it is to have a good friend. You know, it's like this warm feeling, but it's really a feeling in our heart. The warmth of friendship that I feel when I'm with you. This is talking about friendship, love, caring for somebody else. So these are all emotions or feelings that we have in our heart. And poets can bring these things out a lot too. So sometimes you'll find this imagery that appeals to your senses, but a lot of times you'll find the emotions really being appealed to as well. And the author will do a really good job of describing something that's sad or something that makes them really happy. And you just kind of have to pick up on that. It's a little trickier to find or to recognize this than it is to recognize the other ones because they're pretty straightforward. This one is a little trickier and you've got to look a little deeper. All right, guys, you've done a great job learning all about imagery. So just remember when you read your next poem that you're going to use your senses to try and find those things that the author's using to help you feel like you are really there. Be sure to check out all my other videos on poetry and don't forget to subscribe so you can stay updated on all the new videos I post. Thanks so much for joining me for this video. I'll see you in the next one.